What is this? I grabbed two books at once. How did that happen? Oh, two Star Wars books. Star I... Wars, The Maverick Moon. Hmm. So we're going to read these back to back? I don't know. They they look kind of long. Hmm. I mean, we'll, 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 have to read, we'll have to read one after the other, but we may not have a separate video. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. So, yes, I pulled two Star Wars books at the same time. So we're doing one after the other. When we're not doing the other books that we're doing in between Sasami Jan's books. <laughs> so this is Star Wars, The Maverick Moon. Wow, that looks more like um, Anakin's pod racer than something that Luke would drive. Um, that actually looks a lot like his vehicle on Tatooine. The Sand Speeder, I think it was called. Yeah, the Sand Speeder, but this is called the Maverick Moon. Why would he have the Sand Speeder on a moon? He would only have it on Tatooine. That's no moon. That's a space station. Okay, the Maverick Moon. Illustrated by Walter Wright. And again, no author credit. Again, copyright 1979. Again, Random House. And that doesn't look like a moon. That looks like a comet. I think they just wanted a very pretty starscape. Yeah, the light from the microphone right in the middle here makes it look really cool. Yeah, it actually looks like there's a giant planet right there. Mm-hmm. No. Just, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to share with the class? In another time, in a faraway galaxy, and it goes downhill from there, <laughs> there lived a young man named Luke Skywalker. He was a student at the New Academy for Space Pilots, and already he was one of the best young pilots in the solar system. Luke and his classmates, the planetary pioneers, were training for a special mission. They were going to fly young men and women, the smartest and strongest and most talented, to uninhabited planets. There they would help build new colonies, founded on peace, justice, and goodwill toward their fellow members of the galaxy. One morning, Luke raced toward the Academy at breakneck speed. His good friend, Princess Leia Organa, was coming to visit the Academy. Luke wanted to be there when she arrived, so he could show her some of the Pioneer's exciting plans. I wonder if this is based on one of the early drafts of the script, or he was actually called Luke Starkiller. When Luke reached the Academy, he hopped out of his land speeder. Some of his friends waved or called good morning. All of them smiled. They knew why Luke was in such a hurry. Princess Leia had arrived. Although she was one of the youngest members of the intergalactic government, she was well known to everyone. Hmm. It's got some nice art, though. It's very, um, sci-fi book cover. That's a good way of putting it. Luke proudly showed Princess Leia around the Academy. He told her about the work of the planetary pioneers. Some of us will be building homes and schools and power stations, he said. Right now we are planning to use our powerful zirconium rays in the power stations. Instead of being used for war and destruction, zirconium will provide energy for our colonies. It sounds terrific, Luke, said Leia. Suddenly a screaming siren pierced the orderly hum of the academy hallways. That siren meant emergency! Hmm, I have an interesting suspicion of what's going on in this book. Maybe just a little bit. Also, we get to see Luke's face a lot sooner this time. Mm hmm And this seems to definitely be based on earlier works. Luke and Leia raced to the office of General Olsen, Luke's favorite instructor. What's wrong? asked Luke. The general quickly explained the emergency. A small moon from a nearby system had been blasted out of its orbit. No one knew how or why. It's a children's book. You don't need those details. The moon was surrounded by a powerful magnetic field. None of the Academy's sensors could pierce it. Now the maverick moon was on a collision course, traveling at well beyond light speed, and it was headed their way. I, I, I have a few... It's gone plaid. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah good, good reference. Star Wars, Swartz, gotcha. We'll be meeting in the conference room in five minutes, said General Olsen. I'd like you to be there, Luke. Luke and Leia hurried to the conference room. That's actually a pretty good drawings of faces right there. That actually looks like the profile of Mark Hamill. 
Okay, and that comment apparently was the moon. Hmm. An enormous monitor in the conference room was tracking the course of the Maverick moon. Its path was obvious to everyone. In just a few hours, the Maverick moon would collide with them, blowing the academy, and indeed the whole planet, to smithereens. That's a very large moon. And then it's a gigantic monitor because look at the people. That is, holy, the people are, let's see if I can give you a sense of scale here. I, I vote that we actually add this in. <laughs> the people are like, you know those like micro machine people you have? Put that up next to an iPad. Take one of those guys, iPad. That will give you a sense of scale of how big in scale this monitor is. We don't have time to evacuate the planet, said General Olson. There's never enough time to evacuate the planet. It's a planet. Besides, we don't have enough spaceships to take everyone to safety. We still have our old fighter planes, said Luke. And we can use the power we've developed with our zirconium rays to blow that maverick moon right off the star map. General Olson looked thoughtful. Even if those old ships will still fly, you couldn't get close enough to blast that moon. The magnetic field is impossible to penetrate. I'd like to try it, said Luke. It's our only hope. Wow. <laughs> said Leia. Go ahead and try it, Luke, said General Olson. This must have been based on some really early drafts. Mm -hmm. Ah, give with the spelling. <laughs> Luke went to find his friends, C-3PO and R2-D2. These extraordinary robots had helped him before, and he knew they were in excellent working condition. I'll get R2 ready for the flight, sir, said 3PO. Little R2's lights blinked on and off as he beeped and whistled his eagerness to help Luke. Okay, that looks really good. Mm-hmm. Though, technically, you could call these fighter planes, but they're not really planes, per se. <laughs> Luke's X-Wing fighter plane was brought to the hangar. R2 was lifted into the cockpit. Several of Luke's classmates were also getting their planes ready. How did I get myself into this? Luke said to himself. You volunteer, genius! <laughs> Just then, he heard a familiar voice inside his head. Trust in the Force, Luke. It was the voice of his old friend and teacher, Ben Kenobi, a brave Jedi Knight. Ben had trained Luke to use a special power called the Force. Luke had almost forgotten that. Okay, yeah, this is... Th what the... Yeah, this is like based on a rough draft. It has to be. Now he jumped into his plane as 3PO waved farewell. Though I do remember in the early years, um, George kind of sent a lot of licensing stuff he wasn't quite sure about, and he didn't monitor it as closely as he did some of the other stuff. Yeah, some things didn't get as much proofreading as other, or get as locked down in contract as others. Mm-hmm. I want to cough, cough, Star Wars Christmas special. We don't talk about that here. <laughs> then Luke and his crew of brave young pilots took off in the direction of the Maverick Moon. As they neared the moon, a shrill screaming sound seemed to fill their ears. The fighter plane started to shake uncontrollably. Violent waves of color surrounded them. Yes, it does say violent waves of color, not violet. The magnetic field was so strong that not one of the planes could get through it. The force is with you, said the powerful voice inside Luke's head. By themselves now, Luke and R2 plunged on. Not a single plane gets through, but his does. That's not good phrasing, book. Not a single one but his would have been more appropriate. Suddenly, Luke Skywalker broke through the magnetic field. He found himself in a shaky orbit around the Maverick Moon. Prepare to fire the zirconium rays, Luke shouted to R2. We'll have to get out of here in a split second. I wonder if this was actually uh, an early draft of the first movie. Because it like has a similar kind of feel to it. The zirconium rays were aimed at the center of the moon. Luke squeezed down on the firing lever. Yes, we actually have a close-up of his hand squeezing down on the firing lever. It's actually nicely rendered. Actually, this entire page is nicely rendered. So you have the X-Fighter, you have the moon, you have the close-up of the hand. The light from the microphone is doing wonders with these pages. It was a direct hit. The impact of the exploding moon sent Luke's plane reeling out of control. 
R2's lights blinked on and off as his circuits blew. Desperately, Luke tried to regain control, but he didn't have to worry. The Force was with him. The special power he could not explain protected him and steered him free from danger. We engaged the MacGuffin, specifically the magical MacGuffin. Mm -hmm. When Luke and R2-D2 returned to the hangar, the entire population of the Academy was there to greet them with yells and cheers. Happiest of all were their good friends, Princess Leia and C-3PO. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling that this was like an early draft. Like he liked the idea, but didn't use it for the movie. And he like gave it to the book publishers. Also, that's a really good painting of Carrie Fisher. Rest in peace. Yes. I mean, just look at that. It's really nice. Princess Leia placed a medal of honor around Luke's neck. Now we can get back to work, said Luke, feeling a little embarrassed. I'm glad that you and the planetary pioneers, sorry, it's corny as I'll get out, will be able to continue your work, said Leia, but I'm even happier that you are alive and safe. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely thinking that this is like a draft that he was like, ah! I'm not going to use this for the movie, but here. Because it has just enough. It's kind of like that hardcover she book that we read a while back. Everything but happiness, where everything looked wrong, but it seemed okay. It was just off enough that you're like, I can almost see it, but it doesn't match what I know is canon. But, you know, this was published in 1979, way before the movies. The original trilogy was finished. <laughs> This is Star Wars, The Maverick Moon, illustrated by Walter Wright, and once again, written by who the heck knows. Yeah, maybe, like, I'm thinking maybe this stuff was written by George Lucas himself and then just kind of farmed out. Hard to say without some more research that we're probably not going to take the time to do. Just, just letting you know that right now. Hey, Internet, for people who find this video, please put links down below. Feel free to do the research and build up your own uh, headcanon and research. And pl please keep the links uh, work safe, no matter how interesting they are. Anything not work safe, please private message. I don't think that's available on YouTube anymore. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again for listening. And thanks for the Star Wars stuff, Sasami-chan.